welcome to uh, lesson four, which forms part of chapter 17 of our textbook. Um, in this series of lessons, we're looking at series combinations of R, L, and C, or resistors, inductors, and capacitors. So about this lesson, AC circuits often have a combination of resistances, inductances, and capacitances. Therefore, unlike circuits with purely only R, L, or C, the combination means that the phase difference between the total current and the applied voltage is no longer going to be either 0 or 90 degrees. It's going to be something in between. So, in this lesson, shows you how to determine the phase difference and other unknowns in a series circuit that has both resistance, inductance and capacitance. Also in this lesson we're going to explain the terms impedance and resonance and how you might go calculating these. So as you can see um, the lesson I've broken up around the sections in the textbook so 17.1 slides 4 to 15 are going to be series um, R and L, that's uh, resistors and inductors. 17.2, uh, we're going to do series resistors and capacitors, that's RCs, slides 16 to 32. And then um, 17.3, we're going to then put R, L and C all in series together. Uh, slides 33 to 47 and finally 17.4 we're going to have a look at what is series resonance slides 48 to 60. So 17.1 we have here a, an inductor and at the moment we've got uh, an inductor and a resistor in series it's just a picture of a carbon film resistor just a relatively small resistor and you'll notice over here on the circuit diagram an AC supply the resistor and the inductor. So a, uh, a perfect inductor at the moment because at the moment we haven't introduced any internal resistance for the inductor itself. We've simply said the inductor has no internal resistance. So it's a pure inductor and we've put a resistor in series. So at the moment that's where we're going to treat the circuit just an inductor which only has inductance and a resistor in series with it connected to an AC supply. Now here are the waveforms. You can see here the uh, one constant in this circuit is current because it's a series circuit. So if you follow my cursor on the red line you can see the current and the green line is the uh, voltage and you can see the voltage is in phase because it goes to the same maximum point as the current at the same time crosses over at the same time goes to its maximum negative as a, at the same time as current so on and so forth but the inductor you'll notice so the voltage across the inductor this is the one in blue you can see here is leading the rest of the circuit. So the magnetic energy is being stored in the inductor and released back into the circuit. So the voltage here, the inductor, the voltage here is getting to its maximum well before the voltage across the resistor gets to its maximum or the current gets to its maximum. In this particular case, you'll notice that the difference between the inductor and the resistor is 90 degrees. So there's a phase shift of exactly 90 degrees lead. So in a series LR, inductance resistance circuit, the voltage across the inductor leads the current by 90 degrees and the voltage across the resistor is in phase with the current. And again, I stress this is a pure inductor, so nice 90 degrees for a pure inductor. 
So if we were to draw that same circuit as a phase diagram, we would simply have the voltage across the resistor. You can see here where my cursor is in phase with the current. We haven't bothered to draw the current to scale, just use it as a reference on the phase diagram on the horizontal. The voltage across the inductor is on the vertical and it's at 90 degrees. And remember, our phase diagrams are rotating anti clockwise, so the direction my cursor is going. So as this phase diagram rotates, the voltage across the inductor is always in front of the voltage across the resistor by 90 degrees. We're able to draw that as a voltage triangle, and you can see that here in diagram B. The voltage across the resistor is the horizontal of the, of the uh, triangle. The vertical is the voltage across the inductor, VL, and the hypotenuse of the triangle is the voltage that the supply is at, given also by the angle theta. Remember that all AC quantities have both magnitude and direction, so the resistance has a magnitude indicated by the length of the green line and an angle of zero. The voltage has a magnitude represented by the length of the blue line and is at 90 degrees and the voltage is represented by the length of the hypotenuse and the angle theta where my cursor is sitting. So in a series LR circuit the phaser for the voltage across the inductor leads the current by 90 degrees. The phaser for the voltage across the resistor is in phase with the current. So because we have this lovely voltage triangle and it happens to be a nice 90 degree triangle and we can see it here redrawn over on the right hand side, we can use Pythagoras to actually calculate the length of the hypotenuse. So the voltage of the hypotenuse is simply the square root of V squared R and plus V squared L. So we're taking the green side of the triangle and squaring it. We're taking the blue side of the triangle and squaring it, taking the square root of the two, and that gives us the voltage across the hypotenuse. So just to reiterate that, on our voltage triangle, because it's a right angle triangle, we can use Pythagoras to calculate the hypotenuse. And to get the phase angle, we can now use some trigonometry. So typically you might want to use cos. So we have cos here, and that's the adjacent on the hypotenuse. So here we have the adjacent, which is the voltage across the resistor, divided by the hypotenuse, giving us the cos of the angle, the ratio of the angle. We could have also uh, rearranged the equation and we can work out theta as an angle, cos to the minus one adjustment on hypotenuse, or cos to the minus one voltage across the resistor divided by the voltage across the supply. So as long as we're using these two values here, we can use cos represented by the uh, symbol theta in the bottom left hand corner of our triangle to work out the phase angle. So here's our first little example. We're going to work through this together. So example 17.1, we have a 40 ohm resistor in series with an inductor that has a reactance XL of 16 ohms. We're told that we have a current of 5 amps through the circuit. So step one, we want to work out what the voltage across the resistor is. Nice easy ohms law. So the voltage across the resistor is the current through the resistor multiplied by the resistance. So we're going to have 5 amps multiplied by 40 ohms 
equals 200 volts. So it's simple Ohm's law. Because we have the value of the resistor and we're told the current through the circuit, it's quite easy to work out the voltage drop across the resistor. Step two, voltage drop across the inductor. Done a very similar way. So the voltage across the inductor is equal to the current through the inductor multiplied by the inductive reactance. So we're going to end up with 5 amps multiplied by 16 ohms. We're going to have 80 volts across our VL. And finally, to close the triangle, we can now work out what the voltage across the supply is because we can simply take V squared R, so that's 200 squared, add it to V squared L, which is 80 squared, and then take the square root of the whole thing, giving us 215.4 volts. And of course, step four, we want to find out what the angle is. And remember, we could find out what theta was, cos to the minus one, voltage across the resistor divided by the applied voltage. And our voltage across the resistor was 200 volts divided by our voltage across the supply, which is 215.4. And you'll find that comes out to 21.8 degrees. So we've used Ohm's law for step one. We've used Ohm's law again for step two. Pythagoras for step three and some trigonometry for step four. Now to show that as a phase diagram, you can see here in the bottom right hand side, if we were to do this to scale, we might have something like 200 volts on the horizontal, 80 volts here on the vertical, and 215 volts on the horizontal with an angle of 21 degrees. So that's the phase diagram. It's also the voltage triangle of this particular circuit. So here we can see that the phase diagram shows that V is leading I. So the applied voltage is leading the current. Remember, the current would always be on the horizontal, therefore it's leading. Remember, it's rotating around through anti-clockwise. Therefore, the voltage in this particular case is leading the current by 21.8 degrees. So, the next concept we're going to introduce to you is impedance. Now, impedance is the combined effect of the resistances and the reactances in the circuit. It only applies to AC circuits. It's measured in ohms and we use the symbol Z, big capital Z for impedance. And the impedance of any circuit always equals the applied voltage V divided by the circuit current. So that's ohms law. So Z equals V divided by I. As long as you know what the applied voltage is and you know what the total current is. So here's another little example from the book. Again, this is just a rework of uh, example 17.1. So what's the total impedance? Um, in this particular case, we're just going to take the voltage, if you remember from 17.1 at 215 volts, divide it by the current and the total impedance of this circuit is 43.1 ohms. So it's the same circuit that we used just previously for 17.1. We know what the total current was because we uh, were told that we worked out the total applied voltage. So we can now work out the total impedance of the circuit or the total AC resistance of the circuit 215.4 divided by 5 is just Ohm's law. The Z replaces the R. 
So V on I equals Z or R. So we end up with 43.1 ohms. We don't use R. We use Z because we are talking about an impedance that uh, resistance will change depending on frequency, of course. So we're going to now introduce you to a thing called the impedance triangle. And this series of uh, little triangle diagrams is just a progression to demonstrate how we get from A through B to C. So A is the voltage triangle, which you're just become familiar with, where we have the voltage across the resistance on the horizontal, the voltage across the inductor on the vertical, and the hypotenuse of the triangle is the applied voltage, and the angle from the horizontal is the phase angle, or the angle difference between voltage and current. Now, this second diagram simply divide the voltages by the current. So again, this is just Ohm's law. So remember, uh, R equals V on I. So it's just Ohm's law. If we take the voltage resistance and divide it by the circuit current through the resistor, we're going to get resistance. So that's nice and easy. R equals VR on I, giving us this bottom part of the triangle in the third picture, which is the impedance triangle. On the vertical, we're just simply going to take the voltage across the inductor and divide it by the current, and that's going to give us the inductive reactance. The symbol for that is large or uppercase X, lowercase L, so XL. And then finally, the hypotenuse of the triangle is the voltage applied to the circuit divided by the current in the circuit it's going to give us the impedance, which is Z. So an impedance triangle for an RL circuit is derived from its voltage triangle simply by dividing each voltage by the current in the circuit. That's all we're doing here in this center triangle is we're simply dividing by the current, which is the constant in the circuit. And that gives us our impedance triangle. And again, refer to your equation sheet. I've put that on the front of the equation sheet so you're constantly reminded that resistance is the horizontal, inductive reactance is the vertical, and impedance Z is the hypotenuse of the triangle. So how can we calculate impedance? Well, because an impedance triangle is also a right angle triangle, then Pythagoras' theorem can be used to find the impedance from the resistance and inductive reactance values. So not only can we find voltages, we can find the reactants. So the reactance Z is equal to R squared plus XL squared. So Z is the impedance in ohms, R is the total circuit resistance, so any resistance that's in the circuit, R, is squared. And then the total inductive reactance, which is XL, we've got to square that. And then add them together and take the square root of both, and that will also equal the impedance. So again, we can calculate impedance, because impedance is also a nice right angle triangle and simple application of Pythagoras' theorem. So pause the video here and see if you can do this one before I work through the answers. Here we have R1 at 50 ohms. We now have a practical inductor because we now have an inductor dot 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 around the outside. We've got an inductor. It's got some internal resistance indicated here at 4 ohms and our inductor is at 0.2 henrys. So see if you can do some calculating around that. And I've also given you the impedance triangle here. So pause the video and see if you can work out the voltages and their relationships around this particular circuit.
Okay, hopefully you've worked through the, uh, the question yourself, or now I'll, I'll do it on the screen. So let's find XL first, and of course that's 2 pi FL is the equation that you need for inductive reactants. And if we put in the data, which is 2 pi, a frequency of 50 hertz, an inductance of 0.2 henrys or 200 millihenrys, you should come up with 62.8 ohms. This is only for the inductor component here. Next, we want to find Z. And the way we can do that is we need to take R and square it, plus XL and square it. Now the trick here is to remember there are actually two R's. So we've got a 50 ohm R and we've got a 4 ohm R. We've just simply got to add them together. So we're going to end up with R is 54 ohms. So the total R is R1 plus R2 giving us 54 ohms. So our Z is going to be 54 squared plus 62.8 squared we got from up here and then add them together take the square root of them all and we come to an overall impedance Z of 82.8 so that's how we got our 54 in our triangle here we just added the two resistors together we calculated 62 ohms for XL, then we just use Pythagoras to work out the horizontal of the triangle. So on this screen here, I've just done the worked example with a, a little bit more detail to show you how that all came together. So again, We've got our values for around our circuit. We found 2 pi FL, which is 6.28 times 50 times 0 0.2, 62.8 ohms. So just instead of jumping, we've spelled it right out. To find Z, we've simply added R1 to R2 and got 54 ohms. So it's 54 squared plus 62.8 squared. Take the square root of all of that. The answer is 82.8. So hopefully you are able to achieve all of that. If you made any errors, um, just take a particular note of where you've made your mistake. And uh, that's the end of our section 17.1.